Hello? Hi, Daddy. Who is this? Your daughter? No, that's not possible. My daughter's asleep, and I know that because I kissed her goodnight almost two hours ago. When are you and Mommy coming home? There are times when we make history. It doesn't matter. You're going to be asleep by then, right? And there are times when history makes us. Good night, Daddy. Good night, little P. To <laughs> ensure you that the same American dream shared by our fathers, our mothers. It's weird. Yeah. Ours just went black, too. Secretary, you need to put the phone down. Mike, what the hell is going on? I said, put the phone Man. down. This is like some kind of explosion. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, please, just tell us what you know. Capital's been attacked. Congress. Captain. Eagle is gone. Sir, you are now the President of the United States. This is the most devastating attack on our country since 9-11. Can anyone claim your responsibility? Not yet. The guy's never been elected to anything. Did you know President Richmond fired him this morning? Now he's the president. Maybe he'll realize he has no business running the country? We're in a state of war. Tom Kirkman is not gonna get us through this. What the hell am I doing here? I'm not the guy for this. Is Dad scared? Dad's not scared of anything. Do you really believe I should step down? I do. You may be right. But for now, I'm all you got. The world thinks it can test us right now. What do you want me to do, General? Declare war? There are different ways to show force. We are going to do this my way. If it doesn't work, we'll try yours. You're still on my side. My mom is on your side, Mr. President. Whoever did this is just getting started. Mr. President, you need to be stronger than you've ever been before. Mr. President, you're live. Five. I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of the President of the United States. So help me God. Power is a lot like real estate. It's all about location, location, location. The closer you are to the source, the higher your property value. Centuries from now, when people watch this footage, who will they see smiling just at the edge of the frame? So help me God. Congratulations. This is going to be a big year for us. This is the memo I've drafted on our Middle East policy we've been developing. I'd like to coin the phrase trickle-down diplomacy. That Frank. way... We are not nominating you for Secretary of State. I know he made you a promise, but circumstances have changed. The nature of promises, Linda, is that they remain immune to changing circumstances. I knew you shouldn't trust that woman. I didn't. I don't. I don't trust anyone. Then how could you not see this coming? Walker just nominated Carl. It's a long road to confirmation. I protect your identity. I print whatever you tell me, and I'll never ask any questions. So we're talking about trust. <laughs> what is it you want? Your absolute, unquestioning loyalty. Anything. We're in a very gray area, ethically, legally, which I'm okay with. Shelley Barnes of the Washington Herald boarding a source close to the president. Not exactly sure how it got leaked. I want it over. I'm sorry, Mr. President, but I will not do that. Get ready, Kathy. Things are about to move very quickly. Okay. I'm ready. Do you understand how you're to behave? And if I don't play along? We'll cleave you from the herd and watch you die in the wilderness. You promised me it wouldn't be like this. We'll have a lot of nights like this. Making plans. Very little sleep. I expected that. Take a step back. Look at the bigger picture. That's how you devour a whale, one bite at a time. Give and take. Welcome to Washington.
Dr. McCord. You got you the name of a stylist, right? A stylist? It's coming from the top. The chief of staff says I'm to be your personal appearance specialist. I don't need a stylist. The way he conveyed it to me, you don't have a choice in the matter. I've never met a situation where I don't have a choice in the matter. Speaking to the president, I'd like to brief him on the Syrian kidnapping. You know, we have rights. Call the American embassy. It's a volatile situation. I don't want him being caught off guard if it hits the press. Two American kids arrested and imprisoned in Syria. Ethan and Tyler Cole, brothers from Hartford, Connecticut. We were sending Ethan to Europe for graduation. He asked Tyler to go with him. We had no idea they'd cross into Syria. If the State Department is going to take this on, it's going to cover. It has to go up the chain of command. What do you recommend? I know some people on the ground. I'd like to proceed through back channels at this point. No, we have to do it my way. We're very happy to have His Highness and all of his wives. Hey, Madam Secretary, do you have children? I do. I have a son and two daughters. A nice small family. Well, I, I just have the one husband. <laughs> <laughs> Is that really what we're calling it? That's what we were calling it before it went bust. Now we're calling it Operation Never Happened. They're going to execute those kids in a week. And I feel like I let the president down. Oh. By not insisting that he do the right thing. Turns out he's one of ours. Marine Sergeant Nicholas Brody, MIA since early 2003 and presumed dead. Until now. What happened to his partner? Brody was a scout sniper. They work in pairs. Corporal Thomas Walker also went missing that day. Carrie Matheson, ladies and gentlemen, how does she do? According to Sergeant Brody, Walker was killed during their captivity. But that shouldn't dampen what is a major win for the agency and for everyone in this room. You should all take a moment. Give yourselves a big hand. Because of you, an American hero is coming home. Good job. exact words, please. An American prisoner of war has been turned. He said this in English. Yes, he whispered it into my ear right before the guards pulled me away. I don't want to use the expression, turned. He meant turned, working for Abu Nazir. What am I just hearing about this now? Because until 10 minutes ago, I didn't know there were any POWs still alive in Iraq or Afghanistan. So you're suggesting that Abu Nazir... You're suggesting that Abu Nazir planted intelligence on his own safe house just so we could recover Sergeant Brody. I realize it sounds like a reach. To say the least. Why not just drop him near a checkpoint make it look like he escaped? Why, why, why would you sacrifice 13 trained fighters? Because Abu Nazir is playing the long game and this way no one suspects a thing. Except you. Yeah, except me. Yeah. And Sergeant Brody's due home from Germany tomorrow morning which gives us just under 22 hours. To do what? to authorize a surveillance package, to tap his phones, wire his house, follow him wherever he goes. David will never sign off on that, you know it. Well, of course he won't. The White House needs a poster boy for the war, and David just served him up on a platter. That's why I'm coming to you. I'm not going over his head, not on a hunch. But if I'm right, if he is a terrorist, we need eyes and ears on Brody from the minute he steps off that plane. Never happened. But out of the question. Carrie. All right, fine, what, what do I have to do? 
prove that the safe house lead was planted. Or at least give me reason to doubt its authenticity. I'm in the penalty box, Saul. I'm 5,000 miles away from my contacts. I, I can't collect intelligence from behind a desk. Find a way. No, don't look at me that way. We're all fighting the same enemy here. The door's open. How you doing? It's, uh, it's dark in here. No. It don't be that way. He misses you. It's not just the money. He wants you back. Where is he? Home. He sent me here to... Don't, Bill. It's a phone. <laughs> I'm just getting you on... You pull it out and I'll shoot your hand off. Get down on your knees. And keep your hand where it is. Who called my work? Who? Your, your lawyer called us. <laughs> we returned. Phone, huh? Who called her at home? Your lawyer? Uh, I did. Why? Four. He'll get angry if I don't answer. Bill's here. You want to talk to him? Oh. Just so you know, the money is mine, community property. I don't want any trouble, but I am staying put, and it's over. I've moved on. You should, too. You run again. He'll find you. I wish I could spend more than a few minutes with you, but the polls don't close in the East for another hour, and there are plenty of election results still left to falsify. <laughs> you know, with so many people participating in the political and social debate through call-in shows, it's a good idea to be reminded every once in a while. <clears throat> it's a good idea to be reminded of the awesome impact, of the awesome impact I'm sorry, uh, you're Dr. Jenna Jacobs, right? Yes, sir. It's good to have you here. Thank you. The awesome impact of the airwaves and how that translates into the furthering of our national discussions, but obviously also how it can, <clears throat> how it can... Forgive me, Dr. Jacobs. Uh, are you an MD? A PhD. A PhD. Yes, sir. In psychology? No, sir. Theology? No. Social work? I have a PhD in English literature. I'm asking because on your show people call in for advice and you go by the name Dr. Jacobs on your show and I didn't know if maybe your listeners were confused by that and assumed you had advanced training in psychology, theology, or health care. I don't believe they are confused, no, sir. Good. I like your show. I like how you call homosexuality an abomination. I don't say homosexuality is an abomination, Mr. President. The Bible does. Yes, it does. Leviticus. 1822. Chapter and verse. 
I wanted to ask you a couple of questions while I had you here. I'm interested in selling my youngest daughter into slavery, as sanctioned in Exodus 21-7. She's a Georgetown sophomore, speaks fluent Italian, always cleared the table when it was her turn. What would a good price for her be? While thinking about that, can I ask another? My chief of staff, Leo McGarry, insists on working on the Sabbath. Exodus 35-2 clearly says he should be put to death. Am I morally obligated to kill him myself, or is it okay to call the police? Here's one that's really important, because we've got a lot of sports fans in this town. Touching the skin of a dead pig makes one unclean. Leviticus 11-7. If they promise to wear gloves, can the Washington Redskins still play football? Can Notre Dame? Can West Point? Does the whole town really have to be together to stone my brother John for planting different crops side by side? Can I burn my mother in a small family gathering for wearing garments made from two different threads? Think about those questions, would you? One last thing. While you may be mistaking this for your monthly meeting of the ignorant, tight-ass club, in this building, when the president stands, nobody sits. Toby. Yes, Mr. President. That's how I beat him. Catherine Gunn. What were you employed to do? I translated signals intelligence and I reported anything of interest to my clients. You're a spy. Did you get this email? The Americans want us to help them get a UN resolution for war. So, you work for the British government? No. No. This proposed war is historically unpopular. I work for the British people. I do not gather intelligence so that the government can lie to the British people. Intelligence may be being manipulated to take this country to war. I could get you a copy. You're asking me to collude in a breach of the Official Secrets Act. Some call that treason. their government and their country. You might need our help. If we do not go public, we would be conceding that no one can ever tell the people when their government is lying. Your marriage will be interrogated. My husband had absolutely nothing to do with this. He's a Muslim. I'm sorry? chose loyalty to your country over loyalty to your government, your marriage, and yourself. I think that speaks rather highly of you. Catherine Theresa Gunn, you were charged with an offence of the Official Secrets Act. Do you want to risk it all? How do you plead? Σκάνδαλ από τη Δευτέρα 19 Δεκεμβρίου καθημερινά στις 9 και 4. Μια εθιστική σειρά που καθήλωσε εκατομμύρια τηλεθεατών σε όλο τον κόσμο. Τρυπώνει στο παρασκήνιο της ζωής των πλουσίων και ισχυρών. Η σύμπλος διαχείρισης κρίσεων του Προέδρου των ΗΠΑ. Η πανέξυπνη και σεγυνευτική Ολίβια διευθύνει μια επιχείρηση και είναι η καλύτερη σε αυτό που κάνει. Προστατεύει επικίνδυνα μυστικά των πελατών της για να μην δουν ποτέ το φως της δημοσιότητας. 
Όλοι στην Ουάσιγκτον χρειάζονται την Ολίβια Πόου. Σκάνδαλα καταστροφικά πρέπει να κρυφτούν. Κυρίω το πιο μεγάλο από όλα, το δικό τη. Ένα θυελόδε ερωτικό τρίγωνο. Η συνέχεια στι οθόνε σα. Από Δευτέρα 19 Δεκεμβρίου και καθημερινά στι 9 και 4. Super secret identities, no one has any idea who they are. Well, they look like us. They speak better English than we do. We are Philip and Elizabeth Jennings. We have been for a very long time. Risks every day, Philip. That's what we do. Politics is about people. Politics is about people. I've met some people, okay, real people, and I got to tell you, a lot of them are idiots. Which way are you gonna vote? The way my principles and conscience tell me to go. Which way do you think that should be? I'm genuinely sorry that my arrival here has caused you to become so self-conscious and gain a little weight. He's such a. That's why I hired him. I need a. You here to spy, Jonah? I'm not here to spy. I work at the White House, so I can just walk in and say I'm from the White House. What the are you doing? Did the president call? No. No. This is the president calling. I just oh. can't wait. Oh, I have to take this. Hi, Mr. President. FYI, no, the president's not calling. FYI, Gary, no. Okay. The president is experiencing severe chest pains, so we need to get you to the West Wing immediately. Oh. I'm so sorry. 